I'd like to call the Dublin City Council meeting in order. If you would, let's please stand. And uh, Councilman Jerry Davis is going to give us our invocation, and then we'll say the pledge to the flag. Let us pray. Dear God, all wise and gracious Father, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here today to conduct the business of the Dublin City Council. We thank you for allowing us together. We ask you to bless each and every one of us here. Bless all of our citizens. Let us be thoughtful and wise in the decisions that we make that we could be good stewards of the resources that's been entrusted to us. We will be sure to give you all the glory and honor and applause. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to thank everyone for coming tonight. Uh, this is our first of, of uh, several meetings that we'll have in the different wards, Ward 1, Ward 2, Ward 3, and Ward 4. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Councilman Jones for uh, coming up with this idea. It's a great idea, and I think uh, in talking to Tiffany Stanley earlier tonight, uh, We've already got some spots we're looking at at the other wards. We're going to try to do it every other month for the first round and then change it to quarterly after that. So this is hopefully a practice we'll uh, continue doing. Uh, first item on the agenda is approval of August 1st, 2019 City Council meeting minutes. And y'all sure going to have to help me tonight. All right. Got a motion by Mr. Johnson and a second by Mr. Brown. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Can y'all hear us out there? Okay. All right. Item number two is approval of bills over $3,000. I have a motion to pay the bills, Mayor. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Edwards and a second by Mr. Griggs that we pay the bills. Any discussion there? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Item number three is approval of purchases over $3,000. And Mr. Jones, I think you got a couple for us. Yeah. Uh, Mayor, we have two purchases. Uh, the first is a uh, 2020 crew cab <coughs> uh, pursuit rated pickup truck for the fire department. Um, we had budgeted uh, $50,000 for this purchase. The low bid we received was $43,601.37 from OC Welch in Hardyville, South Carolina. Um, this is a, a higher level pickup truck. Shop for trucks lately. It's a, it's a very good product. Um, staff recommendation is to award the low bidder OC Welch. You've heard staff's recommendation, Council. What's your pleasure? Second. Mr. Greg. Mr. Davis. Motion by Mr. Davis and a second by Mr. Jones that we approve the purchase in discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, motion carries. I told our chief earlier tonight I'd, get, I'd gotten a little concerned because we'd gone two weeks without having something to buy for the fire department <laughs> on here. So I'm glad to see we got something back on there. All right, you got one more thing. Okay, Council, you've heard staff's recommendation. Second. Who's the motion? 
Got a motion by Mr. Brown and a second by Mr. Jones that we approve the purchase. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item number four is presentation by Ms. Kessler Holder, Director of Dublin Youth Program of Installation of the New City of Dublin Youth Council Members. Kessler, how you doing tonight? Pretty good, Mary. How about you? Good. Greetings to our illustrious Mayor and Council. Good evening. It is an honor to stand before you today and introduce our new 2019-2020 City of Dublin Youth Council. These students have hit the ground running and we are excited for what they have in store this year. Just to name a few, we are looking forward to bringing home the District 12 Championship Trophy to the City of Dublin for the third consecutive year through the Secretary of State's Office Student Competition. And we are already expanding our public service outreach into the community. We thank each of you for the opportunities and support you provide to the youth programs in our great city. I'm going to ask the students to please come to the front as I call each of their names. Mayor Aviance Marshall, Councilman Xavier Blash, Councilwoman Elizabeth Brooks, Councilwoman Takayla Wright, Councilwoman LaCarsha Carr, Councilman Jabari Epps, Councilwoman Chastiana Jones, Councilwoman Zaylin Powell, Councilwoman Robin Sorrent, City Clerk Skyriana Cannon, City Attorney Muhammad Ali, City Attorney Rock Rogers, and Historian Ariana Hill. I'll now turn them over to our City Attorney, Mr. Josh Powell. Guys, the only advice I can give you is hold on. Y'all are in for a great year. You're in for to learn a lot about each other, about our city, about Georgia Municipal Association. You're going to get to be a part of some neat stuff. And I know by next, the end of the year, when you go through graduation, y'all will be talking a lot more than you are tonight. So good luck and enjoy your year. Thank you. Good afternoon. City of Dublin Natural Gas Department, Yvonne speaking. How may I help you? You're smelling gas inside your house? Eric, at um, 709 Bell Drive, they're smelling gas um, inside their house. Can you go check it out, please? 10-4, I'll be in route. One of our service personnel is being dispatched. At this time, please evacuate your home and move to a safe destination away from the potential gas leak. Do not light a match Turn on any electrical switches or devices. Do not hang up your phone, place it down, and leave. And please do not re-enter your home until a leak investigation has been conducted by our gas department. Mr. Cates, I'm Brad. Uh, this is Eric. We were the city of Dublin Gas. Are you, uh, you say you called us about smelling some gas. Um, yes, yes, yes. Everybody outside? Well, what we're going to do, Eric's going to go to the side of the house, check the meter out, make sure everything's okay, nothing's running through the meter. I'm going to check around the door, um, and then we'll go inside and kind of see what's going on. Okay. 
Mr. Case, we went inside and uh, checked around the ceiling. Pretty much everywhere, all your appliances, and it looks like you're in good shape. The reason that we check up high around the ceiling is natural gas is lighter in the air. It's always gonna rise. We checked all your appliances. Absolutely nothing was indicated as far as gas leak goes. So I believe you're in good shape. Miss Case, we appreciate your business um, and being a natural gas customer. We're on call 24 hours, seven days a week. If there's anything that you ever need, give us a call. We'll be more than glad to come out and check anything that you need. Okay, all right, so appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day, sir. All right. All right, appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, second reading, the item number five is a Second reading and public hearing of an ordinance to amend the budget for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2019. Is that, uh, we need to read, uh, you reading that or Blake reading that? Okay. Uh, this is ordinance number 19-16, an ordinance by the mayor and council of the city of Dublin to amend the budget for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2019, provide for an effective date and for other purposes. We will now close our city council meeting and open a public hearing uh, and ask if there's anyone here to speak in favor of this amended ordinance. If not, is there anyone here to speak in opposition to the amended ordinance? Hearing neither, we will now close the public hearing, to, uh, open the city council meeting back up and turn it over to council for action. Move approved. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Jones and a second by Mr. Brown that we approve the amendment. Any discussion? Mr. Daniels, will you call the roll, please? Councilman Brown? Yes. Councilman Jones? Yes. Councilman Smith? Yes. Councilman Edwards? Yes. Councilman Griggs? Yes. Councilman Johnson? Yes. Councilman Davis? Yes. Ordinance passes. Thank you. Okay, item number six is discussion and or action on a resolution showing local government support of an application for a DCA loan for the rehab of the corner, or excuse me, the Corker and Kingfisher buildings. Mr. Jones, you want to explain that? Uh, yes, this is a resolution of mayor and city council to approve the purchase of certain property from Lifetime Cabinet. That's the wrong one. That's it. got it in the wrong place. <laughs> Um, but this is the uh, uh, resolution uh, for the city government to support a loan from DCA to the owners of the uh, Corker and Kingfisher building. Um, that all they're asking us to do is say that we think this is a good idea. This, uh, these buildings are located in the middle of the block where the, games, where the um, Jackson Street Plaza is being constructed. Uh, and there is no obligation for the city uh, in this. No money the city is obligated to pay back. We're just doing a resolution to say y'all are in favor of it. Okay, do I hear any motion? We got a motion by Mr. Brown and a second by Mr. Davis. We approve the resolution. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item number seven is discussion and or action on a resolution to authorize the purchase of property from Lifetime Cabinet Sink. Right, this is a resolution from Mayor and City Council to approve the purchase of certain property from Lifetime Cabinet Inc. set an effective date for other long purposes. Uh, Mr. Mayor, for some time we've been looking for a um, tract of land that was well located to the city of Dublin to eventually move uh, our operations such as public works and gas department um, out of any residential neighborhoods and try to combine everything in one place so it's not kind of patchwork all around the city. Um, found this track uh, near town. It's at the corner of Kellum and Marion Street, Highway 257, right where that red light is. Uh, if you remember where the old field garden factory was, it's behind that. Um, it's about 57 acres. Um, uh, we had it appraised and we appraised, uh, offered the appraised value of $6,500 per acre to the owner and that uh, offer was accepted. Um, this resolution will give the city the right to enter into a purchase contract and after that uh, we will do our diligence on environmental matters, uh, matters of title and those 
So the staff request and recommendation is to enter into this contract for the purchase of this land. The purchase price is $335,245. Okay. Uh, Council, you've heard staff's recommendation. Any a motion or discussion? Move for approval. Second. Dave. All right. Got a motion by Mr. Davis and a second by Mr. Jones that we approve the purchase. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item number eight is discussion and or action on approval of an updated uniform travel expense policy for city employees. Is that Mr. Stanley or Mr. Jones? Uh, I can, I'll, okay. Ms. Stanley, I'm gonna ask that you explain it by all right we're updating the city of dublin policies and currently we reimburse actual costs for meals during travel for employees but we're moving to um, go to a per diem basis up under this travel policy all right council got yeah, a motion by mr smith and a second by mr jones that we Approve the policy. Any discussion? Hear none. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item number nine and ten are items that we're going about our upcoming election. Item number nine is discussion and action on the contract with Helen Harper, election superintendent for the use of electronic voting machines. All right. Several years ago, we, we, we used to use some very, they're very interesting looking, but they're very old uh, voting machines. The council stopped using, using those. We began uh, contracting with the county to use their electronic voting machines. And uh, this has just been the same amount of rent. It's $2,000 to lease those machines for the, uh, uh, for the election. And that amount is still the same. Staff recommendation is to enter into this contract. Yeah. Council, you've heard staff's recommendation. Got a motion by Mr. Griggs and second by Mr. Johnson. Second by Mr. Johnson. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Item number 10 is discussion and or action on agreement with the Lawrence County Board of Registrars for conducting absentee and early voting. Again, Mr. Mayor, the city has done this for, for several elections now, and this is really the purpose of having uh, Ms. Susan Brooks and the Lawrence County Board of Registrars actually conduct an early voting period and, and collect an absentee ballot. Uh, the price of this has actually fallen from $10,000 in the past to $5,000 this year. Council, you first. All right. Second, Mr. Davis. Thank you. Got a motion by Mr. Johnson and a second by Mr. Davis. We approve the uh, we approve the agreement. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Hi, I'm Tracy Middlebrooks. I'm with Muddy Paws Dublin. We are a boarding, grooming, daycare, and training facility. Our facility is a group play area. Our dogs get six to eight hours playtime every day. So when your dog comes to stay with us, they're not just sitting in a kennel. We have indoor facilities as well as outdoor facilities. We do separate dogs according to size and temperament. All of our kennels are indoors. So when your dog stays with us, they are sleeping indoors in a climate controlled environment. When it's too hot or too cold outside, this is one of the areas the dogs can come to get playtime. That way they're not just sitting in a kennel. Uh, if need be, we can rotate dogs between outside and inside. So if your dog is only used to the inside and the only goes outside to potty, we can accommodate that. Uh, we have a full service grooming salon six days a week. We also offer training. I am a certified professional dog trainer. I can do everything from basic obedience up to canine good citizens tests. So if you have any questions, feel free to call. Um, most of the training is done here on site. We have boarding also as well as daycare. Boarding starts at 27 a night. Uh, we do give a multiple dog discount as well as military discounts. We like to say that a tired dog is a happy dog. When your dog comes to stay with us, we look at that as them getting a vacation.
Okay, item number 11 is citizens' comments. Are there any citizens that would like to address council tonight? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. How are y'all doing this evening? Um, I just wanted to come up. My name is Teresa Holiday, and just um, introduce myself. I'm co-chair with Mr. Tim Ellington on the Vision 525 um, for the Wabash area. And I just want to come up and just, you know, read off a little bit and introduce that activity to you that Mr. Tim will later be coming back and talking with you guys on. Um, the Vision 525 Steering Committee is a small committee of concerning citizens dedicated to the development of better health and wholesome um, recreation in the city of Dublin. The committee feels that providing additional recreational services to the residents over in the area of Dublin um, City will benefit the community greatly. The proposal is a sports and recreation uh, complex center that they're willing to bring over uh, with different types of activities for all ages, such as basketball, soccer, mm -hmm. uh, computer labs, touring, weight room facility, dance, class uh, aerobics, meeting spaces, and also rental and Receptional party area over in the uh, 525 area. Um, also, um, it's also going to benefit as far as you know, playground, picnic area, uh, community community activity. Um, also, the community organizations that are held over there in that area, such as our Oconee National Alumni Association, which we just um, gave a great reward to Mr. Roscoe Brower over in that area. So also, you know, that that's a monument that they've already set up there and we want to be around that area. Um, I know there's been talk in the city, if anybody's been following it and, you know, social media, whatever, where we've been go reaching out to the residents in that area, this area, and letting them know about the 525 vision. Um, that area is over there in great need of a change. Uh, we think that this proposal, this group will bring on something that will be new over there in that area, not only just for the residents there, but also the residents of Lawrence County, not just the city area, also the kids and youth in that area. I think this proposal will be great for us to bring over. And I just wanted to come up again and introduce myself and um, my co-chairman, Mr. Tim Ellington, and bring the Vision 525 of Wabash to you guys. How's Tim doing? He's doing great. I, I talked to him um, this morning. He's keeping me straight because I stay so busy. Yeah. But he's doing good. I talked to him this morning. Um, he wanted to be here um, drastically, and I wanted him to be here because um, you can't tell what's in someone else's head. You can only just share their vision. Um, so I did want him to be here, but he did promise me that the next time that you guys meet, it would be yeah. in his presence. Thank you. All right. Okay, does anyone else like to address council? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Emery Bostic and I'm involved with the Southside Community Association. And uh, first of all, I just wanted to congratulate the council for doing something a little bit different. It's bringing the government to the people. I think that's a great idea. You're to be applauded for that. And I hear we having some fish. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just wanted to let you know that I appreciate all the effort that you are making trying to get people involved in the operation of the city of Dublin. Continue to do the work that you do. Uh, the last thing I wanted to just mention is that this is a great facility here. It is good to have you in the house where this is a great facility. I grew up over in this neighborhood. It used to be a swimming pool and all that over here. And uh, have even used this facility for certain events. And the only disadvantage of this, this venue here is that it has no running water for food. But if we could begin to think in terms of how can we get a grant to install something like running water, kitchen, this would be a great resource for the uh, community to continue to use. So I encourage you that if we could do that and consider that, it would be great. Thank you. Thank you.
Yes, sir. Albert Stanley, I'd like to follow up. This, I'm glad you all came down and you conserved this building. This is a historical building, built in 1956. Uh, like I said, this used to be the boys' club. There wasn't but two in the state. Johnson excuse me the last time, so I got the black and white showing. So what I'm saying is, being historical, I got all the information it takes to write a grant if y'all supply somebody that got the knowledge to write the grant. It's, it's a fire hazard. Got five people here. One by one, two doors, you can go out. So if you had a fire, people be bumping the doors, couldn't get out. That's just an example. So while y'all down here, you would, would you walk around and look at it and see what we could do by getting getting this building a grant, uh, been a city building, you're supposed to keep them up anyway. You know that right? Mr. Jones? I, I, I'm, I city's supposed to keep a building up anyway, right? If it belongs to the city? Well, yep. won't. There you go. So <laughs> they don't want to. But uh, I just want to let you know it, it, it was historical. And uh, if we can get a historical grant or whatever kind of grant, I'd like, you know, whatever it takes, I can get information from Ms. Stanley before she leaves, retire, and that'll take a lot of the legwork out. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else like to address council? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Thanks. Deborah Howard. I was I came to voice my concern concerning the dealing with the water department. Um, I was think I, my concern is I think the employees that's working for the water department need to be educated on more about how like for example if they uh if you pay your bill and they um uh, you pay your bill and they cut the water off and for example i'm just using myself for example my bill was paid and they cut the water off and then they supposed to cut it back on but they lost the paperwork somewhere somehow or another somebody laid the paperwork nobody didn't know what happened uh what transpired and then when you talk to people I called her after our line. That lady was she was real nice. She tried to help me as much as she could. But the person that was on call, she knew that uh, I had paid the bill because I had the receipt and everything. But she knew the situation, but she still wouldn't come back out there and cut it on. It was just a lot of, you know, I don't know. They say misunderstanding, but I think that. It, uh, the water department should be more educated on when it comes to something like that because I went without water all day and couldn't go to work the next morning and then when I came to the city hall what's the saying Gary thought it was a joke you know he laughed about it because he like well everybody made mistake and then they didn't know where the paperwork was and then when they find the paperwork it's they don't put it somewhere else I don't know who did it everybody was pointing the finger at different one and another issue, uh, some of the community people were saying, you know, they used to, when you pay your bill, you know, like you put it in the box before cutoff day, you drop box, they used to still, I know they used to still charge you, but they wouldn't cut your water off. And my understanding, they don't stop that. Why is that? Uh, we'll, we'll look into it. You know, if you can come up when we're through and let me get your cell phone number, I'll look into it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Sorry you had trouble. Anyone else like to address council? It is. Mr. Pierce, how you doing, sir? Fine, sir. Are you all right? Good. I want to commend each and every one of you for coming down here to Riverview and holding your first out of the office meetings, so to speak, and, and, and coming here, especially. I've been associated with Riverview since day one. The fact of the matter is, I played the very first round of golf that was played on this golf course when it was opened that morning. And I hope that while you're here today or tonight, that you'll take time to get a golf cart and ride around and see what Steve Brown has done for this golf course in the short time that he's been here. It went to the dogs and he has brought it back. And I want to thank council for their support. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, 
Good evening. I represent Dublin City School bus drivers. We're having an issue at Hillcrest Elementary. Uh, basically, it's an accident waiting to happen. Uh, the buses are having problems getting in and out of the school area, um, especially coming out to Hill, uh, Hillcrest Drive, the street, and wanted to see if we can get something done about that as far as having an officer over there, you know, on a daily basis. Now, when school first started, we had some officers there, but here as of late, haven't seen anybody there, and so it would be a big help. Because what's happening when we get ready to leave the school to get out in the main road, we're having to try to just pick a spot and get out there. Traffic is coming through speeding, and it's a dangerous situation. And so I just wanted to address that. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you for bringing that to us. Dublin Ford Lincoln's favorite part about serving our community is all of the wonderful friendships that we build. And Ty Martinez is one of those friends. I asked for a truck, and I couldn't ask for anything better. I mean, when he got the truck, it was exactly what I wanted. And they went. I think this one came from Tennessee. You know, got out of town and brought, brought it to me. Oh, come to Dublin Ford. You know, check them out before you check anybody else out. Others call you customers, we call you friends. That's Dublin Ford Lincoln. Anyone else like to address council? If not, we'll go to council comments. And Mr. Davis, we'll start with you tonight. I want to thank um, everybody for coming out. I want to thank Councilman Jones for making the suggestion that bring the uh, council to the community. And I want to thank all of the people that came up this holiday and Mr. Bostic, Mr. Stanley. I didn't get the rest of the gentleman's name that came, uh, that came up. But I want to thank you for voicing your concerns, things that uh, you feel that could help our community. Uh, as was said, things will be looked into and we'll respond accordingly. I do want to say uh, for those that spoke regarding the renovation or uh, additions to this facility, it is a historical facility. I was born and raised in the community and all of the facilities, we uh, things, the amenities that we had, the swimming pool, and they, it was the home of the uh, old Negro 4-H camp. And so people used to come in from various cities in Georgia right here every summer, and it was a wonderful facility. We have talked about plans uh, to uh, uh, make an addition to this building and do some uh, more renovations here. So uh, I appreciate the concern. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to thank everyone for coming tonight. Um, thank the Youth Council for this upcoming year. Uh, I'd like to thank all of the people that work for the city of Dublin. You all are doing a good job. Uh, we can't wait till Monday where we can register and run again for uh, our seat on council. You know, the full district will be running. We're going to be electing the mayor. So um, I got my golf cart out so I can get ready to run. Uh, I just got to get me some shoes now. So I'm looking forward to this upcoming year. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Uh, congratulations to the Youth Council. Look forward to y'all having a great year. And uh, I'd like to thank everybody that came up and voiced their opinion about issues that we're having um, without hearing those who we may not know about them. So um, thank y'all for that. And everybody have a great day. Thanks, sir. Mr. Edwards. Uh, did what everyone said. Thank you very much for coming. Congratulations to the uh, Youth Council. Uh, being sworn in today, and uh, we're going to learn a lot. Like the mayor said this year, we uh, appreciate you stepping up and taking the time to be a part of it. Uh, I thank the employees everything they do every day, uh, get them out every day. Uh, I thank all the citizens who come up and voice concerns and, and uh, everything you have to say. I appreciate everyone for coming out. Thank you, sir. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'll ditto everything that's been said. Thanks for coming. Uh, Mr. Dwayne Greer, we're glad to have our new clerk here with us tonight. He's brand new, so we're going to work him over. 
What? HR. HR, excuse me. <laughs> HR. Uh, Blake, you didn't know about that. We learn as we go, don't we? <laughs> Just kidding. But anyway, Dwayne, we're glad to have you on board. And you can be a great addition for the city. Youth Council, congratulations to the new officers and to those who came and spoke. Uh, all your concerns and congratulations and frustrations are taken note of, and I'm sure we'll be acting on that. But thank you so much, and be safe in all this heat. God bless you. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out and um, get over what everyone has said. And we're going to start with our youth council. I'd like to congratulate you on starting your journey on the youth council this year. Um, look forward to working with you. And I ask, and I will ask that um, you, know, you learn all you can learn, but also that um, we as council reach out and build a relationship with y'all and help mentor y'all to y'all can do better and help out. And we don't, they're not just the council, but the public. They have their meetings, come to their meetings. Just don't sit down and send your use. Come to the meeting, voice your opinion. I encourage you, get your peers to come to your meetings and voice their opinions and, and ask you what, and tell you what you could do better. Don't be afraid to present that to us as council. But your, your, um, the water park, prime example of not did it, came from the youth council. We had over 40,000 um, people come visit that water park this year because of an idea that a youth, that a youth council saw instead of a swimming pool. So don't be afraid to voice your opinion. Let your ideas think of how we can make the city of Dublin better. That's what we're all about. Y'all are the future. You are right now, not just the future, but you are the present leaders. So please just think, just don't sit there and just say, well, I'm gonna enjoy this and sit down and have, you no, know, take advantage of every opportunity that you have. Also, uh, speaking of coming to their meetings, the youth council will be meeting this coming Saturday at 1130 in council chambers at City Hall. So come out and support them. Also, on August the 17th, we have team court and a youth council meeting. Team court will start at 9 a.m. So let's come out and support both of those youth programs. Also, I'd like to thank the city of Dublin, county commissioners, the Dublin Lawrence County Rec Authority for all the work that they have done on upgrading what they have done to the historic Oconee football field. If you haven't been by there, come Saturday. We have a team, the Dublin Lawrence County Chiefs. I'll be bringing, be playing a team, playing a preseason game against the um, Miller County Chief, Miller County. Come out and watch. They done put up a school board, watch these young people in action. It's life going back again, as Ms. Tr as Ms. Holiday said, they're working on that life in Southside. Come out and watch the life, the support, the community. Come out and support these young people. Also, if you um, like to thank um, the Rick Authority again, for all the work they did to the Old Corner Gym. If you haven't been and seen the floor at the Old Corner Gym, it looked nice. Got me want to put my basketball shoes on and get back out there and see what this old bone, old body can do. But, but, <laughs> but go out and go. But let's go look at these things. You know, we're in a historic place now, as it's been on said. We do need to look at what we could do to upgrade this place and make it better. Continue to voice your opinion. Also, I announce and thank the, um, the police department for their work in um, helping with the um, Scottsville reunion. It's coming up on August 31st. Come on out to Scottsville, have a good time. Bring your lawn chairs, bring your grills. Let's sit out and let's fellowship and let's have a good time. So I think that's about all my announcements. We'd like to thank everyone for coming today. Uh, just don't just leave. It's smelling good. I'm not going to stand between you and this food. So let's break bread and let's fellowship afterwards. Mr. Jones, I think you just broke the record Mr. Edwards and Mr. Smith had said earlier. <laughs> Mr. Brown. As Councilman Jones just said, uh, I believe I'm standing between <laughs> everybody and the food. Um, I'd like to see Benny out there on the court too. I think that might be slow break instead of fast break. <laughs> Um, but I too would just say uh, like every thank everybody for being here all the comments that were been made and I don't think they're taken lightly and congratulations to the Youth Council and I just thank everybody for being here thank you sir Mr. Powell just like to say congratulations to the Youth Council look forward to hearing and seeing great things from you this group um, if there's everything I can do to help you please let me know my office is at the back of City Hall let's see no comment. Okay. Mr. Jones? Um, a couple of things. Uh, just we need to be remembered. Uh, Mr. Jerry Champion, uh, wife of Captain James Champion of the Dublin Police Department. We need to keep that 
very serious. He had a severe heart attack last night, and uh, it's really, really in bad health. So keep, keep them in prayer. Um, and Mr. Russell Maddox, who was a, a, a ranger here at the golf course, just passed away. Um, so please let's keep them, uh, you know, see if you know the family, see what you can do, see what you can reach out and try to help them. Um, also, I wanted to thank uh, Ms. Artifia Stanley for helping get this together, and certainly Mr. Steve Brown and uh, his staff. Um, they are back there. You see, you see Steve where he likes to be. He doesn't like to be up front. He likes to be in the thick of things. They, they're back there cooking and getting our dinner ready, and, and again, uh, he has really done a, he and his folks have done a, an incredible job on the golf course. I hope everybody can kind of walk around, take a look, see how pretty it is. And invite friends to play golf. Um, that's all. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Davis, you got something else? Yes, I did. Want, I want to take this opportunity. We, we do have uh, Reverend Stanley here with us. And I was looking at the email from the email from the VA. And he was voted again as the chaplain of the year, yeah. Reverend Stanley. With that being said, Reverend Stanley, would you mind saying grace for us? Yeah. Huh? Okay. Uh, You've already said that. I know. I got one more I'd like to say to um, Andy. Our, our community lost a great advocate also this morning, Reverend John Vaughn. So let's keep his family in prayers and uplift and encourage. Okay. I thank your youth council, thank you Tiffany and, and city staff putting this together. Thank you. <laughs>